God prepared me for this and for every all the loud noise of the hate he silences it he does he really does <clears throat> people are upset with this family for having seven kids despite living in a one-bedroom apartment poverty has nothing to do with a family of six in a one-bedroom apartment about to be a family of seven please stop showing sympathy for bull crap my problem with that jenkins family is this woman has come on this app and basically said that she wants to continue having babies as long as she goes viral and we have a five six and seven year old it really ain't that much and i was like in fact that i want to have three four more and she stops and says i want to ask you guys about your spiritual life like do you guys like believe in God who says that we should be fruitful and multiply. Hi, I'm the first baby mama. He has more than one son. He probably has more. This is her husband. Mr. Jenkins is not her husband. 26 year old S offender from Washington is being held without bail after he was charged with kidnapping and S abusing a child under 14. This is because I smoke marijuana. I got that Mary Jane running through my vein. Hello, I'm Salem, and welcome to my commentary channel, where we take serious topics and dissect them in a not-so-serious way. Today's topic, <sighs> the resilient Jenkins TikTok drama. Kenji, what is that? I literally have no idea what this is. I swear, dogs have this special talent of being able to find the most random items in the most randomest of places. Hello everybody, it is me, Salem, and welcome back to my Chanel Missing a Nail Edition. Usually my nails are always nice and proper for my videos, but my nail tech is in Mexico right now, you know, how dare she abandon me in my time of need. So just ignore my crusty dusty looking nails. I've forgotten how hard it is to weight lift with like 10 inch nails on and this one completely popped off. Speaking about popping off and working out, I'm about to pop off because TikTok has worked my last damn nerve, okay? There is no way that I could go to sleep at night knowing I got six of my kids living in my kitchen on the that gone floor like they cluttered in a can of sardines. <laughs> This is like the second video in a row where my nerves have been worked for real. If you guys haven't seen my last video, it is this one. I talk about the toxic and crazy world of K-pop fans who literally sent a thousand funeral flowers to a K-pop idol who is still alive simply for kissing a girl. And it's just so crazy. Recommend that you watch it. But in today's video, we are going to be talking about something a little different, but just as wacky. The world of family, TikTok, vloggers, influencers, etc, etc. Videos of their daily lives, of their cheering, what they feed said cheering, how much they love their cheering. And quite honestly, a lot of the content is really wholesome and low-key be healing my inner child. My feelings matter. I am capable of making friends. I can't. Get out. But then there is a whole nother side of family TikTok that isn't so wholesome. And it's just content that is straight up rage bait, straight up romanticizing neglect of children. And girl, whatever this is. Welcome back, y'all. It comes been a wholesome night with the resilient Jenkins. Got the floor swept and mopped in the bed area. Got the beds back down for bed time. Got the floor swept and mopped in the bed area. Got the floor swept and mopped in the bed area. You done lost your damn mind. When you get your damn mind, you call me. What do you have to say about it, Kenji? <laughs> exactly, even Kenji's tired of this. TikTok has this way of romanticizing really toxic things, so I'm not surprised that this is becoming a huge problem on the platform. The problem being just this normalization and romanticization of truly mediocre parenthood, especially more recently, the resilient Jenkins situation on TikTok where it is a family of basically six going on seven because of course, who live in a one bedroom apartment and the kids don't even have mattresses. And the parents are snuggly and buggly all up in their one bedroom that has updated lights and a PS5 with a big TV screen. Look, People have already been having this discourse on the internet on how people just don't like to see poor people live. The Jenkins family is a result of a horrible economy that we're in right now. People should be attacking capitalism, not them. Um. Because what you see isn't always the truth. Say it with me. What you see 
Is it always true? Thank you. This is a family that believes in being quiverful because supposedly God told them to have more kids, even though they can't afford the ones that they have already, yet they're having a seventh. And Mommy Jenkins wants to have more because supposedly her husband told her that it's okay as long as they go viral with each kid that they have so that they can make content off of it. This is a family where the dad said that he refuses to get $30 an hour because he's quote unquote worth more. So he said it's better for him to make zero dollars than any money at all. But in reality, it was exposed that he doesn't want to make $30 an hour because that means he's going to have a W-2, which means that he's going to be forced to pay child support with the secret hidden family that he hid from his current wife. Not only that, tell me why the baby mama came on TikTok to expose his ass too. Hi, I'm the first baby mama walked out of his son's life. He has more than one son. He probably has more. Not only that, apparently there's a private investigator involved too, where apparently and allegedly this woman isn't even married to this guy and she's still legally married to her first husband who's in prison for SAing his own mom? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't feel bad for them. And y'all, this is literally proof that you cannot trust everything that you see on the internet. Not even the supposedly wholesome family that is trying to get out of the struggle type content. And also, they're from Portland, bro. I live 10 minutes away from Portland, Oregon. And when I tell y'all, I know the type of people who live there. So I have a say in this, okay? Only God can judge. Call me Judge Judy cause um, I'm a judge, especially when it comes to children. First, y'all know the drill, I gotta pay my bills. So here is a shout out to our sponsor for this video, Shopify. When you think about brands and businesses that are absolutely slaying it right now, like Alo Yoga, Allbirds, and even Skims, it's easy to focus on the cool brand, smart marketing, or just how iconic the products are. But there's one not so secret part of their success that's often overlooked. The businesses behind the business that make selling and buying effortless. And what is that secret? Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify, period. It's the home of the number one check on the planet. And here's the also not so secret secret, ShopPay. This boosts conversations around your product up to 50%, meaning way fewer abandoned carts everywhere and way more sales. So if you're looking to grow your business, your platform needs to be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling on the web, in store, in their social feeds, and everywhere in between. The secret's out, businesses that want to grow, grow with Shopify. Upgrade your business today and get the same checkout experience like the brand Skims uses. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Salem Tovar, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash Salem Tovar to upgrade your selling terrain. <clears throat> Who are the resilient Jenkins and why is everyone on the internet mad at them? Now, if you guys aren't chronically online like me, then you probably have no idea what's going on in the world of family TikTok influencers. Despite this world already being crazy, there has recently been a family on the side of TikTok that has completely gone viral for being even crazier. I understand being in survival mode, but there's just some things you can't let get that bad. You know what I mean? Nothing works, my dude. Constantly smell like cash up in here. The resilient Jenkins crew has come out and said their house is infested with lice and bugs. Go outside. outside with that. Go outside and cleanse yourself. Cause it ain't everybody in the house. It's you. The Resilient Jenkins is a family vlogging TikTok family of four kids, two adults, and another kid on the way who are a family that live in a one bedroom apartment. They are low income and they're just trying to make it work. Their kids seem to be happy and healthy. The father is in the picture, encouraging people who are also struggling to do their best. And quite frankly, I see nothing wrong with that. Psych, it's actually not like that at all. Recently, this family went viral for just I feel like oversharing their struggle because it's not an involuntary struggle. It's 100% voluntary, okay? Turns out that these people who live in the one bedroom apartment actually let their kids sleep on the kitchen floor and the living room floor while the mom and dad have a nice mattress and bed, which the kids don't even have, with a flat screen TV and a PS5. And turns out the dad doesn't even want to work despite him being fully capable of doing it, especially as a fully functional able-bodied person because he said if he doesn't get more than $30 an hour he'd rather just not work because he's worth more than that but in reality it's because he doesn't want to pay child support to his secret family hi I'm the first baby mama he has more than one son and on top of that Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins aren't even actually married Mrs. Jenkins real husband is in prison I don't even know them and I know all their business do y'all think that's normal to have all your business out there 
to have your children's business out there because i don't think it is and trust lots of people have lots to say about this family and honestly i agree with the criticism constantly smell like cat up in here to come on the internet and say that your place smells like cat mess and you are seven people living in a one bedroom apartment why do you have two cats girl i didn't even know they had cats y'all don't get mr fluffy and mr whiskers out of that situation i hate when hoes have a bunch of kids and then on top of that they add two extra mini mouths to feed by getting cats or dogs mittens doesn't deserve that okay constantly smell like up in here if your apartment smells like cat you should probably clean it Can I just say something? There's this really weird thing that I've been seeing on TikTok where it's like, oh, poor core. When you grow up poor and everything's like dirty and gross, it's like, um, I don't know, y'all. I grew up dirt poor tambien and like my mom still cleans. Like, can we not make being economically struggling a synonym for being dirty? and disgusting because it's actually not normal and whenever this subject is brought up people want to talk about oh classism that classism that y'all are classes actually y'all are classes for associating low income with lice and cat piss and things being filthy as normal in that lifestyle when that is not true i'm sorry i've seen plenty of rich people who are disgusting and disorganized and i've seen plenty of poor people who keep their places nice and tidy so don't even being constantly infected with lice because of the cats that you have that you can barely take care of let alone your own children is insane having laundry that's molded in the corner which can be so bad for everyone's health in the household especially for the kids immune systems and lungs is insane sorry but that's not called being poor or low income that's straight up neglect there's a difference at first i wasn't gonna speak on the whole family of six living in a one bedroom situation because the topic of impoverished families is very very sensitive and a lot of the times y'all neglect the fact that a lot of the reason that this happens is systematic and that's why a lot of people accuse y'all of perpetuating eugenics and she's absolutely right the reason why a lot of people end up in these situations is because the economy is bad i mean i've said this before in my videos right now capitalism and the economy is going down a route where it's anti-children and it's anti-family as much as you hear nowadays in politics talking about like it's all about family we need to prioritize family no one can prioritize family and having kids because the economy is that bad people can barely afford their own groceries in rent and then they get left with like one dollar for their savings if they're lucky how could we possibly afford kids in this economy so i understand that this is a topic that's very sensitive but at the same time why are you having multiple children knowing damn well that you cannot take care of them at one point it is absolutely a choice it is absolutely a choice to continue having children and to continue raising them in straight up poverty and that is so unfair to not only you but also the children especially the children the children are okay they're in a safe environment children don't know they're poor until someone else points it out hey then i even see somebody say children don't know they're poor yes they do yes the f they do all right hear me out y'all many times children aren't aware of their family's economic struggle sometimes they are because the family will straight up tell the kids like hey yo no christmas this year unfortunately but if you weren't that type of impoverished growing up then you were probably the kind that was like hmm i have a feeling that we're not well off and i can't ask for certain things children are like sponges and you don't really have to directly tell them anything blatantly they just kind of pick it up and as they get older it does affect them you know how many people i know and that my friends friends know or just stories i've heard of people who grow up in these big families that cannot afford anything and how traumatizing it is as they got older yeah it is far too many many of them will say that they weren't necessarily blatantly aware that they weren't well off but they knew that they had a big family and all the resources would have to go to the next kid and then the older kids would be parentified and would be put in charge to take care of the younger kids because the parents couldn't afford to stay home so they both had to work and it just created this toxic dynamic where no one could have anything of their own and in the jenkins case the kids can't even have their own room because of the decisions the parents made to continue to have more kids sure maybe the kids right now aren't totally aware but as they get older they will and i don't believe that this is a bad thing there are so many people who grew up with low social 
social economic childhoods and still had so much fun and had so many precious memories but i think the difference is that i don't know maybe their parents didn't film it and shove a camera in their face while they were struggling accidents happen people have kids on accident all the time the kid themselves is not an accident but it does happen through accident right people sometimes have children way before they're prepared to stuff happens and that's okay but i don't understand why it's considered controversial or problematic or mean or insensitive to tell people that it's probably best to stay prepared anyways even if you're not planning to have kids to have some sort of knowledge on how to raise kids to have some sort of job or finances set up we're not talking telling people to become the next elon musk before they have kids i'm talking about the bare minimum and a lot of that also has nothing to do with finances are you mentally prepared to take care of another human being are you yourself mentally well that is very valuable in raising a child are you the type of person that's going to be teaching your children how to persevere and seek hard work to not repeat the mistakes that you've made i'm not sure if the jenkins dad is doing that and because it turns out if he makes a certain amount of money and has a w-2 he has to pay child support to his other kids that he also abandoned and can't afford to take care of so he'd rather make zero dollars instead of 30 an hour does that make sense to you guys topic two the love triangle and the holy trinity i hate men like this i hate 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 men like this okay i hate that there is a specific type of man who thinks his nut okay his man juice is so precious to him. He thinks that is basically liquid gold and that it is God's calling telling him to procreate as much as he can and to extend his legacy. What legacy? Debt and trauma? We can do that on our own. Like, I don't get it. Or men who don't step up to pay for the consequences of their own actions is disgusting to me. But what I hate the absolute most is when that man pretends to move on and run away from his problems just to repeat it again in someone else's life. You can't just have kid after kid after kid and neglect kid after kid and neglect after kid after kid simply because you can. Oh, and by the way, I know women do this too. Okay, I believe in equal rights and I believe y'all are both dumb. Some relationships don't work out. I understand that. Some pairings of people aren't meant to be many times it is worse for people and couples to stay together than to just divorce i get that but there's a difference between that and then having kid after kid after kid knowing damn well you can't afford it abandoning kid after kid to the point where your own baby mamas are coming on to tiktok and dragging you and what's even more insane are the women who get with these type of men and then these women are like, oh, my king, my king, he's my king, my man's my king. Girl, the only king he's giving you is Burger King. And even then, he doesn't even want to work there. I'm going to say this right here, right now. It doesn't matter if you're a single parent, if you are co-parenting, if you are together, if you're married. It doesn't matter, okay? The most important thing in a child's life is seeing their parents have a good relationship with themselves and with the other person that they're parenting with if that person is still in the picture if you are in a relationship where you're staying just for the kids but you don't love each other then it's not going to be a good dynamic for either of you let alone the kids because again kids are sponges you don't have to tell them anything but they sense it okay they got a sixth sense okay they can smell fear on you and one thing that a lot of people aren't talking about in the whole family Jenkins situation is the relationship between Mrs. and Mr. Jenkins, allegedly because apparently her first husband's in prison, but I digress. The way Mrs. Jenkins jumps through hoops and does a double, triple axel and lands on her feet every time to defend this man. I mean, girl, she should be in the Olympics, like buy Simone Biles. This man can do no wrong in her eyes. This man is her king, her rock, her everything. And I'm just like, let's calm down. And when I say he might as well just be some random guy in her life he really might as well be because she has opened up about how he has only ever complimented her three times in their entire relationship i don't understand how some people can deal with that if my husband doesn't call me the most beautiful creature on earth that he would drink glass for then I will crash out. But honestly, this kind of makes sense because unfortunately, a lot of women who struggle with self-esteem or self-worth tend to rely on men who give them a sliver of attention. And it's just really unfortunate because every person deserves someone who 
definitely compliments them more than three times their entire relationship. But I mean, I do question her morality. She also has said her parenting techniques aren't meant to be quote unquote soft. I will not raise my kids with gentle parenting. You got me bent next. I can agree with this for the most part. These like old fashioned like whooping around kind of uh, sense was just, it took it way too far. Like we don't, don't even take it that far. Which is really questionable. She also doesn't care for her current partner to make things right with his previous partner that he has children with. You guys are three whole ass adults. You should be able to figure out that dynamic. And rekindling with your own son shouldn't be through a TikTok that your baby mama made of you calling you a deadbeat. That's really embarrassing. But not only that, that's really embarrassing for your son. Her name, Arlita, which is Nails by Arita on TikTok, who is a very talented nail artist, has said herself that it's really frustrating that Mrs. Jenkins and Mr. Jenkins not only owes child support, but wants nothing to do with her son. They also constantly put her son in their videos without her consent. And Miss Jenkins branding themselves as a multicultural family, when in reality, one of the kids is not even hers. That is Arlita's kid. And Miss Jenkins is trying to make money off of her child child even though her so-called husband owes Arlita child support. It's just so backwards and it makes for an even messier situation when these grown adults can't be cordial and keep things in order for the sake of these children. And to avoid all of this responsibility by having another kid to add to this mess is just, I mean, it's so unfair and it's insanely irresponsible. And the fact that they want three more is very telling as to how delusional they are and how Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins enable each other to make very impulsive bad decisions without thinking. Now, you're probably wondering why they want to have three more kids, even though they can't even afford the ones that they currently have, let alone their two cats and the other family that the dad is avoiding. Well, guys, it's because god told them to and she stops and says i want to ask you guys about your spiritual life like do you guys like believe in god who says that we should be fruitful and multiply i grew up in extreme religion okay if you guys haven't seen my video on how i grew up basically in a cult this is it right here i recommend that you watch it it's a very good video and explains a lot about my life and my upbringing how my parents were pastors and stuff point is i know a lot about the bible okay and when i tell you this type of family dynamic is extremely common where people will have kid after kid after kid that they can't afford because they believe that the lord said in the bible that that's what they have to do and that the more that they have the more blessed they will be and that the more that they have god will take care of them only to find themselves in a situation where they literally cannot afford anything at all this happens way too much i keep saying that god prepared me for this and for every, all the loud noise of the hate, he silences it. He does, he really does. <clears throat> the first one that I see misconstrued a lot is the quiverful Bible verse. In Psalm 127, three, five says, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them he shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate in this context it's a long ass time ago okay it's not 2024 and the psalmist is describing children as blessings and a source of strength comparing them to arrows that a warrior carries in a quiver in ancient societies large families would be seen as a form of support protection and riches in abundance especially in times of hardship because there was always famine storms and diseases which made children both a practical cultural and financial blessing and if all your children survived through the hundreds of diseases plagues and poverty storms and natural disasters then you were seen as blessed because everyone was dying back then so that is what the verse means however in modern times this bible verse has been misconstrued time and time again and the historical biblical context has been misconstrued time and time again it promotes the idea that families should have as many children as possible as a sign of faithfulness and obedience to god even though god is seeing people on their seventh kid struggling and he's probably in heaven like 
shaking my damn head. A lot of people interpret this verse as a divine commandment. Just have as many kids as you can, which is so insanely irresponsible. Cause I mean, if the Lord let you struggle with your first kid, then your second kid, then your third kid, and then your fourth kid, what makes you think he about to bless you even more on your sixth or seventh or eighth or tenth? And look, no hate to my homie Jesus. I love that guy. I do believe in a spiritual aspect of life. And I do believe that spiritual side of life does come in clutch in hard times. But if we're going to start using Bible verses to benefit our movement and beliefs, then let me pull one out for you. <clears throat> First Timothy 5.8 If anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for the members of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I'm tired of talking about this. Okay, final topic, how the resilient Jenkins played all of us. I think it's important for all types of families who are rich, poor, middle class, whatever, to share their stories and to make content and to create community. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And there's just certain things that I think the internet is just not meant to see. And if you can't handle people criticizing that, then maybe you shouldn't be overly exposing that. But then again, thank God some people are stupid enough to overshare because if they never did in the first place, many of us would have no idea what's truly going on behind closed doors especially in the world of family influencers, TikTokers, channels, and more, who kind of brand themselves as being not only wholesome, but also helpless, and they need your help to keep their family going. And again, this isn't really wrong. A lot of people are struggling nowadays and turning to social media can change a lot of families' lives. However, I feel like nowadays there is definitely this trend of learned helplessness, especially in our current generation. People who suffer from learned helplessness will make it everybody else's problem to solve for them. And I just feel disturbed when I know for a fact there are actual families out there who are truly struggling because they have a disabled parent or they only have one parent or they have disabled children and even then they're still trying their best they're not making content off of it exploiting their kids or exploiting kids that aren't even theirs for a profit and know that their situation requires more attention on their current kids rather than planning for five or six more i swear family channels and vloggers and influencers get exposed like every month there's a new family who has like dirty dark deep secrets who are presenting as these family friendly like lovable quirky people and it's crazy to me that people fall for it still to this day especially with the resilient jenkins situation the resilient jenkins want to make money off of this and they even uploaded an amazon registry where people can buy them stuff and people actually bought stuff now granted there is some stuff on the registry that was for the kids but people also bought stuff like a ring light so that these people can continue making content, which is crazy to me. But people will still constantly defend this family, defend their choices, and blame literally anything but the parents for their own decisions. And honestly, I, I don't know why, especially after finding out everything that I have found out, against my will, by the way. How is it possible that through one viral video of this family, everyone knows your business everyone knows your business with two scrolls i found all of this within like three scrolls and that makes me really worried for the kids future because this oversharing will leak into the kids privacy once they can monetize it even more and once these kids are older they will be used to financially make up for what the parents lack at the expense of their privacy and mental health and that happens a lot but here's the thing your children owe you nothing your children owe you nothing and that is something that a lot of parents don't want to hear because they want to hear like oh you're gonna take care of me when i'm older mija you're gonna do this like, like no don't touch me ma'am no there is a reason why a lot of people are going no contact with their families and that's all i gotta say about that and just watch there is gonna be a huge rise of these kids getting older and going no contact with their families because it's like it's okay for us to struggle and for us to have been financially 
struggling but what's not okay is the fact that you filmed it all and that you were trying to start drama online just to pay our bills like some stuff should be kept private unless you're trying to become better unless you are seeking help but it seems like these people aren't trying to get better and they're not trying to seek help there is a massive difference between people asking for genuine help and then just uploading an amazon registry that involves a ring light so that you can continue making content because you yourself said that your husband agreed that if you keep having kids and if and if you guys can become viral family vloggers that it's okay to continue having even more kids in this environment for the sake of clout like uh huh guys is that the same as asking for help because i don't think so they're constantly making excuses and the reason why i wanted to make a video about this is because this type of family dynamic is so common in real life that it's actually really sad it's because i know people like this in real life and how much it pisses me off it's not fair that kids have to suffer for the bad decisions that the adults make around them children were not asked to be brought into the world and to basically put that burden on them is so insanely unfair and here's the thing you don't have to be rich to be a good parent i've seen plenty of well-off parents who are just as selfish that are just as disgusting and neglectful i've seen poor families whose kids are loving and caring who have fun it's all about the family dynamic where the priorities are at where the resources are going to who's prioritizing who having those boundaries having privacy as a family and having family time learning to grow and change together and the fact that there are some people saying you're doing your best mama everyone struggles no i'm sorry there is a massive difference between a mom who is in survival mode a parent who is in survival mode mode a mom who is struggling economically versus a mediocre mom and a mediocre parent who clearly doesn't want help and i'm getting sick and tired of people praising the mediocre and trying to normalize the mediocre just so that they who are also mediocre can feel better about themselves or feel like oh, i'm relieved because someone else is just as mediocre as me and i know that it's a very rude thing to say but that's why I said it. Y'all remember how I said earlier in this video that I'm really close to Portland and I know the types of people who live there? Yeah, you guys probably thought that wouldn't get brought up again, but here I am because I'm about to say something. The fact that this mom is a weed smoking, sage burning, dream catcher, cultural appropriating white woman makes a lot of sense. And there are tons of those in Portland, by the way. In general, whenever something bad happens or whenever there's an influencer that go that gets excited exposed guys why do they always live like an hour or two hours away from me and here's the thing whenever they do get exposed literally everyone who's from portland or washington look around and be like yeah that makes sense i mean y'all <laughs> onision lives in seattle i got catcalled once by a man on like a 10 foot unicycle once like <sighs> just anyone in the pacific northwest in general tend to be not okay in the head but see that stuff is starting to make sense right stuff is starting to make sense <sighs> but you know what those mountains and waterfalls, the amount of small coffee shops that we have here, the fact that Coraline and Twilight were filmed here makes me deal with all of this. I love it here, not gonna lie. And just the vibes of the Pacific Northwest and how open people are, but it really do be going too far sometimes. Like, they will come up to you in the store and be like, I'm so sorry we took your land. And they'll be like, I'm 1% native. And my grandma was a Cherokee princess, so I understand the oppression. That's why I burn sage every morning. It's like, um, I have an actual native friend. Like, her mom's straight up from the reservations. And she don't even do that, bruh. Also, I know how much weed costs, okay? It's expensive here in Portland. So if you got enough money for that, mm, I don't know. My sister says to me the other day, I don't know how you do it. You just have this like ability to keep going no matter what, no matter how tired you are. Sis, it is because I smoke marijuana. I got that Mary Jane running through my vein. Some things ain't checking out. Nah, cause there are videos of her clearly being hella zooted, bro. Like, that's not being high off the Holy Spirit, y'all. That's something else. Here y'all go in the comments. You can be a, a parent and smoke weed. Oh my. It's the principle behind it, y'all. The fact is that sis clearly has money for that, but nothing else. Priorities. Again, priorities. A lot of people of color, especially black people online, are talking about the Jenkins thing, about how because she's a white woman, she's garnering a lot more sympathy than a black 
woman would if she were in the same situation and you know what i i agree i i i kind of agree everything doesn't have to be about skin color but y'all really need to be honest with yourselves when you're talking about this brazilian jenkins situation the number one factor as to why people are saying you have two loving parents in the household is because the mother is not black if that mom was black every single positive video about this negligent couple would not be it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be posted nobody cares about helping people when they are trying they're not even trying y'all got four cats in there and it's dirty get a job people are also saying that she clearly has a fetish of not only breederism but also like race by the way yes people like this are definitely common in portland oregon where they fetishize a lot of poc it's really weird as you can see it says point of view you are pregnant with superior genes that fight through terrain of macaco I, I don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly she said this honestly isn't meant to ruffle anyone's feather but it's a post giving respect to how incredible my hubby's genetics are he makes some of the strongest most resilient babies and of course i play my role massa this one got some good genes massa Oregon and these places, we're known for having EBT available for everyone, for having government assistance, for having food stamps. There are literally so many resources here. So to turn to social media instead for those resources tells me everything. When even I who live here know about these programs and the majority of people do is crazy. You are single-handedly passing down trauma. Generational trauma is real. The curse of generational trauma is so real and so many of these people online who are normalizing this type of behavior or even people in real life who normalize this type of behavior don't understand that and they should absolutely understand that i found the jenkins content to be so triggering because there are so many families that start off like that that eventually become very broken continue to perpetuate the generational curse of poverty trauma and just a lot of bad stuff and when i tell you it's not the nicest thing to see when those kids grow up um it's it's not it's not nice because this is how the generational curse of broken families start where people avoid their past families and past responsibilities, where people ignore the red flags and continue to push through wanting more kids, using excuse after excuse, manipulating outside people to enable them so that they can continue this, twist and turn the narrative and their appearance to be seen as innocent, wholesome, and helpless to garner that sympathy from outside people. I think I've seen this film before and I didn't like the ending, you know what I mean? It's the most heartbreaking, heart-wrenching thing because my heart doesn't break for the family or the situation. It's for the children, their futures, their privacy. The main focus should be them, their environmental health, their actual health and their mental health and quite frankly i'm sick and tired of acting as if we have to continually spare the feelings of the adults in these kids lives who are continually making bad choices at the expense of the reality being lived out by the children whether you want to help or whether you don't want to help it's totally up to you I'm just a random hoe on the internet that's just talking about this situation and my opinions on it. Even if you want to help the Resilient Jenkins family, just make sure it's focused on the kids. Don't buy them a ring light. And free my two boys, Mr. Fluffy Mittens and Mr. Whiskers. They don't deserve this. Why don't I DoorDash? DoorDash is like having a W-2. Mm, no, nothing's wrong with a W-2. Uh, there's no W-2 that's going to give me 30 plus dollars an hour. Right off, right off the jump of what I need. I've been working since I've been 18 years old. I don't have to work night shift. I worked night shift for 10 years. I don't have to work night shift. And nor do I want to. I, I thought that like putting, using a viral video and then using it for yourself like as a stitch or something might bring you more attention, but I quickly found that's not the case. You're really generating that many more dollars to just say that I'll say all that? Alright guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched the entire thing, comment down a duck emoji down below so I know you guys watched the entire thing because if you did, you win an internet hug. Here you go. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. 
click on the notification bell down below so you guys are notified whenever i upload a new video comment down below what your opinion is on the whole jenkins situation do you grow up in a big family what are some things that you want to implement in your life that you didn't grow up with let me know and as always y'all are allowed to disagree with anything i said in this video but just keep it nice and cordial or else i will block you yes unfortunately i will have to block remember to follow me on instagram at underscore film to underscore i have a cowboy hat on that is my instagram if you want to hear me rant and be mentally ill on um, my instagram stories then follow me i also have a podcast called the sam tovar podcast on apple music on spotify literally anywhere give it five stars listen to it while you take a dookie i don't really care just listen to it and y'all know the drill i always give you guys homework before the end of every video and honestly my only homework for you is to drink some Baja Blast. With that being said, thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.